What's up? I really enjoyed the Rico character because he was so different than Nate and David were. And I think he offered a little bit of a light to the to the everyday goings on at the Fisher Funeral Home. Restorative art is really what our technical term is. And he really took pride in what he did, which is what we do. And he was really able to take that and I think open the door for dialogue and discussion on really what that entails. I guess I have a lot more in common with David because he's maybe a little more meticulous, takes it very seriously, which you have to, to be in this industry. What? I'm gay. Why didn't you ever tell me? I am telling you. We've had a very strong sense of identification towards David by the funeral directors we've met who are gay. Because, you know, talk about never thinking you'd see your own life depicted on screen. That kind of blew things wide open for a number of people. I think he was living a, a double life. When he came to the funeral home, he was like this straight guy that has to put a facade. And that's the way a lot of us have to do it. And then when he came to his personal life, he had a lot of conflicts. Don't you have a soul? Of course I have a soul. It's a terrible thing to say about your partner. Yeah, well, it's a terrible thing to feel about your partner. I noticed a lot more uh, people in the business owning up to their sexuality. So I think David opened the closet of the, of the funeral industry. One of the interesting things about this industry is that it's so hidden. One of the great opportunities for us was let's show it. It's fascinating, and I think it would be dishonest to not really show the reality of what it involves. It's a show about funeral directors, embalmers, morticians. Let's see them embalm. Let's see them deal with reconstructing a destroyed face. We're, we're not even sure what we're doing here. The most tragic and the most difficult cases to do are ones of suicide and people who have no hope or any kind of children's deaths. Uh, it's barely three weeks. Sids? Yeah. I remember in the first season we had a baby die. Oh, Jesus. And one of the writers was very adamant. He said, you can't do that. You just can't do it. And I said, we have to do it because these people bury children. They bury babies. Babies and children die. We have to show that. To not show it is to be cowardly and lazy. Michael Engler, the director of the episode, came up with the idea to do everything from the baby's point of view, so you never saw the baby. And it was presented in the most discreet and delicate manner. Does he look okay to you? Oh, he's just fussing a little is all. He doesn't look a little funny? Of course he looks a little funny. That's his daddy's nose. But you find that when you're dealing with sensitive emotional material, you will simply upset more people when you do it effectively than when you do it in a ham-fisted or caricatured manner. I remember having a young mother whose baby had just died of sudden infant death syndrome. No rational reason why this happened. And as she held that child with me there, and then until she was ready to let go and to have me take that child, how strong and powerful that emotion and that experience was for both of us, letting her know that she was transferring this child into my arms, from her arms, that she trusted me to do that. And those are the kinds of things that the show can depict. And if you had done any less, then the show wouldn't be as good as it was. I'd like to be alone with them for a little while, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Please take as much time as you need. Thanks. We aren't forced to confront our mortality on a daily basis the way that people in the industry are. In that sense, I find them heroic. I'm here for you. Okay, better, but use we're here, not I'm here. You're not their friend. And easy on the touching. Before Six Feet Under came on, when I said to somebody, I'm a funeral director, their initial reaction was kind of squeamish, and it was kind of odd for them. You go to shake their hand, and they ask you what you do, and you say, I'm a funeral director, they're like, oh. <laughs> the new reaction I got after Six Feet Under had been on was they had a million questions, and they said, I would say, I'm a funeral director. And they would say, do you watch Six Feet Under? And it would really open up a dialogue. Before this, people had no desire to talk about death. And so now, the show not only has given them permission, but more people are pre-planning, advance planning. They're advance planning their services. They're advance planning many more things in their lives. 
Do you want to be embalmed? Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to donate maybe your body to science? It's a perfect opportunity to talk about it. I'm very sorry about your husband. I know those are just words. But we'll work together with you to give him a fitting tribute. Thank you. You go and make a show about something that no one wants to talk about and people that no one wants to talk to and suddenly reverse all of that. It can't help but have a profound impact that you can't even know right now. It's too soon. I think that Six Feet Under has actually opened us up again to really talk about death and feel okay about that, that it's not tabooish, that it's not a bad thing, but it is a part of life. I suppose I'll be gone soon too. Oh. I will. That's okay. It happens. Six Feet Under refers not only to being buried as a dead body is buried, but in primal emotions and feelings running under the surface. And when one is surrounded by death, it seems like to counterbalance that, there needs to be a certain intensity of experience of needing to escape. It's Nate with his sort of womanizing. It's Claire and her experimenting with dangerous boys and dangerous drugs. And it's Brenda's whole sexual compulsiveness. It's David having sex with a hooker in public. It's Ruth having affair after affair after affair. It's the life force trying to push up through all of that suffering and grief and repression. When I started developing Desperate Housewives, Six Feet Under was very much in my mind in terms of how they, they wrote those people and the subtlety of it and just how they spoke and the way they actually said things. The depth Alan went to with the characters was very much an influence for me. You don't ever think, what if it was Maya, what if it was Lisa? I can't bring them in here with me, you know? I just want them to be what's good about life. That way I can come in here and deal with what isn't. And certainly on Six Feet Under, we were being treated to a lot of scenes that you just had never seen on a show before. They were really taking you to parts of the human condition that hadn't been examined. And that makes for exciting TV. That makes for a passionate audience response. The audience wants to be shown something different, to kind of get in there and provoke them. We don't like to talk about death. We don't like to talk about being sick. We don't like to talk about mortality. Our seriousness about death is really our effort to reject the miracle of it. All truly deeply spiritual thinking is embrace it, go towards the light. And we tend to not only not go towards the light, we run shrieking in the other direction. The reality is there's only two things that happen in each and every single human being's life, is that they're born and that they die. So there really could be nothing more normal than experiencing a death, because it does, in fact, happen to everybody. I think that was something that had, was really important to Alan, was to be able to say, this is something that's OK to show. I had witnessed several funerals in my own family that were very much Nathaniel's funeral. If any display of emotion becomes too big, that person is shepherded off into a private room because the subtext is, it's unpleasant, we shouldn't see that. It's too private, it's too personal. It's not nice, and that's really screwed up because when someone you love dies, a piece of you is ripped out of you, and there's no way out of it except through it. In America, it's hurry up and go, you know? Well, they died, let's have a visitation tomorrow night and a funeral the next day, and then you should be over it. Well, you're not over it. I was 13 years old when my sister was killed in a car accident, and nothing prepared me for it, and nothing prepared my family for it. Over 20 years later, that grief came up. I started weeping, and I couldn't stop, and it was because I hadn't done it 20 years ago. One good thing that the show has done is it shows that there's no time limit for grief. I will relive my dad's death and funeral, even though it was 35 years ago, whenever I visit the World War II Memorial or have military honors for a veteran um, and hear the Star Spangled Banner or the, uh, and have the flag folded and presented. I go out of my way to drive back to my hometown to see the grave of my mother and father. And I would probably think beforehand, you know, I don't need to do that. I got, they're here in my heart, they're here in my head. But there's something about physically going to the spot where they are that is becoming more important to me. And I wonder if it's because of this show.